I want to talk about ACC coaches have unanimously voted against CFP expansion. Now, we talked about this a little bit uh, last week at some, or really over, over the course of several months now about why they would be voting against this when you know it would actually be good for them. And David Hale uh, put out a pretty good tweet about it, just going through all the different reasons. And it's nothing to necessarily do with... Um, it's nothing to do with like them trying to get Notre Dame to join the conference. Like we only want eight, so Notre Dame is forced to to come in here, et cetera. Um, it's it's a ton of different things that that all kind of play in together, and and I kind of get it right. There's a lot of people that are explaining like the, these players do not want to play extra games, et cetera. Uh, here's here's Jim Phillips's comments on playoff expansion. Um, they, uh, the ACC is the primary league holding up expansion, but they are not alone. It says, uh, while the ACC is the most steadfast, it's largely shared by others, including the Big Ten. Um, it says, in July, Phillips was preaching the need for this holistic review of all of college football. It's not a new thing. He's not wrong. The landscape has changed a ton. He said it's worth understanding those dynamics before making big changes to it. Um, and then he's got uh, number three. In almost certainly a leverage play, once ACC, Pac-12, Big 12, G5 vote for expansion, what's the motivation for everyone to come to the table on the other issues in college football, let alone to consider what the ACC has to say on those issues? This is basically the ACC's trump card. Uh, then it says people are overly focused on the one issue of expansion. Phillips is essentially saying that if you want dessert, you need to eat your vegetables. Like, how can you, how can you get any pudding if you don't eat your meat? Uh, look at the NCAA approaching NIL. They had years. They did nothing, Right. Uh, they were just at a coaches' convention in Texas. The overwhelming takeaway, everybody agrees that their problems with opt-outs, transfers, the recruiting calendar, in-season coaching movement, tampering, but nobody agrees on any solutions, and there has to be some kind of a, a ticking clock to change that. So for Phillips, working with the ACC, there's uh, uh, unanimity like in waiting on expansion to try and get some of this other stuff figured out first. So... Where I was very much against the ACC and thought, okay, them voting against this uh, is bad for the league because if you don't have Clemson, you're obviously not going to get anybody into the playoff. Is that the end-all, be-all, though? And I don't know that it necessarily is. You know, I think Pitt and Michigan State, et cetera, still had a great season. And I, you and I both agree that there should be there should be playoff expansion, but there are other things that need to happen along with it and if the ACC wants to use this as their trump card, like, hey, we're not going to vote for anything until we fix all this other crap, I think I can get on board with that. No, but, uh, no, what are you no, 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 no. This is a do this is what politicians do, by the way. Jim Phillips, hell of a politician, yeah. should should run. He is he is the same type of asshole that is running Congress right now. It's it's if we can't solve all the problems, we ain't solving any of the problems. All right. That is a bullshit excuse from somebody who doesn't want to do something. OK. Oh, by the way, for he, anybody that does not know, Jim Phillips, former Northwestern Athletic Department uh, or athletic director, excuse me. So he comes from Chicago, uh, very uh, private institution, very small, uh, private, yeah, small school, private. The, the, yeah, the yeah. smallest school in, in the Big Ten. Exactly. Um, Highly regarded. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's fine. I don't care. Like what he's doing right now is not good for the sport and it's not good for his conference. Okay. So, so, so that, that makes me question why he's doing it because it doesn't make any sense. And the bullshit argument that we don't want to play extra games. Well, guess what? Only Pitt would have played one extra game. Yeah. If they won, if they won their first round game, they would have played an extra game. That's it. That's the list right there. You're not asking the whole conference to play an extra game. You're not asking all these teams to play an extra game. You're asking one team, Alabama and Georgia, would have played possibly one extra game. That's it. That's the list. And the idea that I'm not fixing anything until we fix all these other things, well, then somebody else just has the luxury of saying, well, I'm not fixing NIL until we fix the transfer portal and uh, expansion. And somebody else is going to say, well, I'm not fixing the transfer portal until we fix NIL and the playoff. Everybody gets – this is what politicians do. If you go into the world, if you can stomach it for enough and listen to the news – and you hear about political news, 
This is what they all do. It is a cop out. It is a bullshit excuse. Everybody is fighting for their their quote unquote cause. And the argument for everyone else to not get on board with that is, is, well, we've got these other things and that's not as important to me. And so this is a bullshit thing. It's not as if you can't do more than one thing at one time. If voting for this and getting this passed meant it's one less thing you have to worry about, Mr. Phillips, and now you can start addressing these other things, then that would be spectacular. But you see it as I can't do anything until we do everything that I want. That is that is political bullshit, and I don't know that any other writer or, 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 or sports columnist or anybody who talks about this stuff for a living, we have a very small niche audience, okay? Tens of people will hear this. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> Thousands of people, people with bigger voices than ours need to be calling this bullshit out. They need to say it in a more eloquent and intelligent way than I do because I am a knuckle-dragging Neanderthal, and I understand that. But I'm telling you, this is what politicians do to cover the fact that they don't want to do anything or they don't want to pass something. And nine times out of 10, it is for corruption reasons. I want to see bank statements. I want to see money. People are telling this guy, this is not coaches that, that don't want to play an extra game. That is a lie. That is an outright lie because Pitt, if Pitt wins their bowl game, their first round of the playoff game, quote unquote, which would have probably been a home game. Um, Well, I don't know who they would have played. They probably wouldn't have been a home game. But anyway, neither here nor there. If they won that game, then they would have gotten one extra game. Yeah. Yeah, one more game. One. And it's because you won. If you don't want to play that game, just go lay down. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not like they wouldn't have played an extra game if they were playing for a national championship. That's it. Right? That's the problem. No one in college basketball has ever complained that we're playing too many games. Why? Because they all want to win the championship. They want to keep playing. Because as soon as you lose, you go home. And 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 go ask these seniors, all right? I would like to take, I don't know, a random collection of 100 college players that were major college football players that played junior and senior year a lot of playing time but never got to play a down of any professional sport in their life. I'd like to poll them two, three, ten years from now, from their last time of playing, and say, hey, what what would you do to have gotten one more game? Yeah. Unanimously, I bet all of them would have said I'd have knifed a random family member to be oh, yeah. able to get one more game in. Now, that, that takes away, like, the – obviously, the difference there being guys that are first, second, maybe even third-round NFL guys that just don't want to risk getting hurt – but, no, but they're all wanting to play play for championship games. Right. Nobody for 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 any playoff team has ever set out. Exactly. Not one team at four games. It, it, so that 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 just that point is moot. The majority of these guys are going to play the same amount of two teams. Two teams will end up playing one more game at the end of this. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're 100 percent right. The most that anybody can play uh, is what 17. If I'm not yeah. mistaken, and that's, that's uh, if a lower seed makes the championship game. Exactly, and you're you're talking about somebody that didn't win their conference title game. That's, that's it. Right. So, yeah, it's a it's a strange situation, but uh, but the ACC, of course, is the one that everybody's pointing at right now, and we'll see how this goes. I mean, we've still got a little bit of time, but there's not much left. Uh, if if you know that you're going to change in 2026, why not just go on and change it in you know. 2024 why not go on and get this thing done so that we can figure well, it out I understand right? yeah. the only reason i would not do it early is is if that means the whole thing's married to espn like yeah no no, no I for sure we, we've that. talked about that yeah but then talk about that don't don't give me a bullshit lie when you say unanimously all what 12 teams in the big big Whatever, uh, 14 the ACC, in the ACC. 14 teams yeah. in the ACC, all of them unanimously say they don't want to do it because the extra game, like A, like I said, two or three of them at most would ever play one extra game, and that's it. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it would be for a playoff, it, you know, so that that's that's a lie. That That is just an outright lie. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE 
at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.